Good afternoon, Paulina. Hello, Professor. You are from which, which Russia is pretty, it's, it's not a country, it's, it looks like a continent. <laughs> so which part of Russia are you from? Uh, I'm from Russian Far East. It, I'm from Khabarovsk, exactly. It's really near to Korea and China. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Okay. So I'm planning to go back home during vacation? Uh, of course, no. There are lots of reasons. First of all, it's impossible to fly right now to Russia. And moreover, all flights is from Moscow. It will be super long flight. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> okay. I see. I see. Yeah. Pretty much colder than here, right? In your hometown. Uh, right now, minus 15, I guess. It's oh. snowy since the start of November. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so the temperature had uh, suddenly dropped to yeah to minus degrees, yeah. So I think everybody need to be careful not to catch a cold. I just wonder, the Russia is pretty huge country, right? So then I just imagine that, so if you, so you're, you're from uh, the, the Eastern part of Russia, right? So then if you meet <laughs> Russians uh, from uh, Western part of, uh, from Western uh, part of Russia, so you guys have no problems in terms of language. Of course, no, we all speak Russian. It's the same Russian everywhere. Okay, no dialect? No dialect? Uh, not much, maybe some words, but anyway, we can understand each other. It's still the same language. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> In Korea... Uh... Moreover, I'm from Belarus, and I also can understand them easily, and they understand me as well. We speak the same language. Oh, okay. The Belarus also... The Belarusians also speak uh, Russian? Yes. Ah, I see. I see. Then pretty, sounds like a, yeah, uh, sounds like, yeah, uh, it sounds like a family, <laughs> family countries, right? Okay. Mm. Great. Okay. I see you guys have a lot of uh, interest in uh, the binary exam schedule. So first of all, my question is that, okay, so I know the uh, December 8 is the last day and uh, December 9 is the like, 9 is the last day uh, of, for this semester. But I'm just wondering if you guys have any, uh, if you guys would like to take the exam on uh, next Tuesday after December 8. I don't know. Professor, we cannot because we have uh, makeup classes these days and they will conflict with the schedule. So we cannot take okay. exam on December 13. Got it. So then December 8 is going to be, yeah, the day for the final exam. And the time is the same as uh, this class time. Start from 2.30 and ends then 4 p.m. And as I said, you guys should be uh, shown on the screen, okay? I, this time I'm I'm serious. Look. I'm serious, okay? So if I can, if I not I cannot see you on the screen, then I will treat them treat uh treat it as a kind of uh, yeah absent or in some sense uh, cheating, okay? So uh, you make. So we are going to have a Zoom Zoom session during the exam. I'm gonna watching. I'm gonna super, I'm gonna watching you guys while or uh, during the exam time. So so you should turn on the video, okay? So that I can see you guys. Because so, uh, yeah, so I just want to make sure everything is fine. Everything is fair, okay? I think it, it is not too much, too much asking for you guys, right? And 
And just in case, if you need it, so please uh, put your calculator beside you, right? So just in just in case you may need uh, some calculator. And um, I'm gonna use the PPT form. So if you have any if you problem, technical problem, then please let me know, okay? Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm gonna use the same format, uh, PPT and uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so if possible, uh, it's, a, it's still okay if you send in, in PPT, uh, but if you if, if possible, it'd be better if you convert the PPT into PDF, right? If possible, I prefer PDF because it is much more convenient for me to, yeah, check the answers. And we can you can keep your uh, file uh, intact, right? So. That's why I prefer a PDF form. In terms of schedule, any questions? No? Okay, so please make sure you're on the screen during the during exam. Okay, so as before, uh, as, as, as the uh, midterm exam, you're gonna, you guys are gonna have 10 questions. So this time seven uh, multiple questions and uh, two short answers and one uh, yeah question for calculation. So in terms of uh, distribution of uh, in terms of the chapters that covered in the uh, final, uh, the multiple questions for each chapter, uh, capital budgeting, MPB uh, and internal rate of return, you may expect uh, two questions and the risk and return or probably one question and uh, cost of capital, beta and uh, CAPM, two questions, WAC and the capital structure, two questions, dividends one, working capital made one, one and international finance, one question. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Any question? No? Okay. Okay, uh, before we uh, move on to the review, uh, today uh, uh, today we are going to review, uh, after the international finance, we want to review uh, capital budgeting. And um, yeah, capital budgeting, because uh, next time we are gonna cover the rest of uh, yeah, topics. Okay, uh, this is the uh, article from, uh, today's article from uh, Wall Street Journal. The so dollar notch is the biggest monthly loss since 2010. Okay, so uh, some of you guys may know that the, the, the exchange rate, uh, I mean, the dollar has depreciated uh, against other currencies uh, yesterday, right? So the value of dollar is significantly um, uh, reduced, uh, but but but, uh, but uh, in the past several months, in, in, in the past uh, up to the uh, up to recently, the dollar has appreciated pretty a lot, right, considerably. But anyway, um, <clears throat> it has some the dropping uh, in the value of the dollar has some relationship with the interest rate. Uh, because the Federal Reserve, uh, the, uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve in the U.S. Has announced that they be, they may gonna slow down the the increase uh, the interest rate increase, so that has affected uh, uh, the mood in the exchange rate market. Anyway, um, what I'm saying is that exchange rate, FX rate, is pretty uh, closely related to interest rate. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, but here, this FX rate is a spot rate, right? Spot rate, spot interest rate, spot exchange rate. Spot exchange rate is the, the current rate with, with, uh, which you use to exchange your uh, money, uh, currencies for another currency, right? Uh, so if you, let's say if you go to bank, then the, the exchange board, so you, you can see all the exchange rates. So those are the uh, spot rate. 
the spot ray is uh, uh, kind of a um, uh, reverse relationship uh, with interest rate. So when interest rate is lower, then the spot ray tend to go higher. Yeah. Um, in the in the previous lecture, uh, we talked about the relative potential power parity, right? So potential power parity is based on the uh, as far as though the product is, is the same, then there should be only one price. So based on that assumption, the exchange rate will be adjusted for the one price, right? So there should be no um, there should be there should be um, more than one price for for the one for the same product. So exchange rate just uh, exchange rate just adjustment for the different currencies, right? Adjustment uh, for the same uh, price of the different currencies. Okay. Hmm. But the relative purchase power parity it, it considers uh, uh, the inflation. But there are many factors that affect the exchange rate: transport cost, uh, taxes, government intervention, market uh, competition and the political risk, political risk, all sorts of things that could affect uh, exchange rate. But uh, the, one of the biggest factor is inflation rate. So relative to the PPT, relative to the power parity, considers that the inflation, because inflation could have a significant impact on the price of the product, even though the product is the same, because the inflation, the price could be different. So. Uh, inflation. If inflation is uh, uh, if exchange rate, the exchange rate should be uh, adjusted for the inflation. Okay. So, if you want to estimate, expect the exchange rate. Expect exchange rate means that if you uh, want to estimate the, what the exchange rate would be uh, after taking consider after. after uh, Take and consider uh, taking account of inflation rate, uh, you take this formula. Okay. Or you can use this one, right? Uh, this one is the uh, second one is a little bit more accurate than the first one. Okay. But just for convenience, you can use the first one. You simply um, multiply uh, one plus the difference uh, in the inflation uh, rate between the foreign country and the home country. So from this formula, you can see that uh, higher inflation means that means the uh, depreciation of uh, the currency, right? So uh, the country with high inflation, the uh, the, the country uh, with high, uh, high inflation is gonna experience a depreciation in the value of the, the currency, right? That, that sounds very intuitively uh, correct because uh, the, the product is the same, right? But the, the price of the, uh, the, the product has increased just for inflation. Inflation means that too much currencies, too much currencies of the uh, current, uh, of, the, of some specific currencies. So uh, the exchange rate should be de uh, depreciated against the other currents because uh, the inflation is uh, the inflation is not does not actually reflect the real value of the product right okay I, I think you guys understand yeah let's take a, this question uh, Japanese exchange rate currently 105 yen for dollar inflation rate in Japan over the next three years will run say two percent. And uh, if U.S. inflation rate will be six percent, so based on the relative PPP, uh, what will the exchange rate be in three years? So the question is, what is the expected exchange rate in three years based on this, um, yeah, this inflation uh, raised in uh, two different countries, Japan and the U.S. So taking on this first formula. Right, the spot rate is 105, right? You get 105 yen per dollar. So then one plus what? 
vice foreign currency. Uh, uh, here, yen per dollar, right? So um, in this, in this case, uh, if the exchange rate is uh, is shown like this, then uh, this part, this currency is going to be base currency. Okay, and yen is counter currency, right? Okay, so <clears throat> one plus. So base currency usually domestic currency and the counter currency usually foreign currency. So um, Japanese inflation is expected uh, two percent, right? Two percent, and the U.S. six percent. Foreign currency inflation minus home currency inflation, right? Then this is the annual inflation, right? So, but the question is, what it, what will be the exchange rate in three years? So we should, yeah, multiply three times, right? So then we can have uh, exchange rate in three years. So then you you so. What is going so do you expect? Um, US dollar is Japanese, Japanese yen. Which one will uh, appreciate in three years? Over the three years, which currency will appreciate or which currency will depreciate? Same question, actually. So definitely, U.S. inflation is much higher uh, higher than the uh, the Japanese inflation rate, right? So the U.S. U.S. dollar will depreciate and uh, Japanese yen will appreciate, right? So based on the theory, the rate to purchase power power uh, power purchase power uh, relative purchase power parity. Uh, you, you can uh, estimate, you can estimate the expected exchange rate, okay, like this. But in reality, um, inflation, the, 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 the inflation, the reflection of inflation in the exchange rate is, takes pretty long time, very, very long time. So, yeah, in reality it is, uh, theoretically, it should work like this, but in reality, it takes a long time. So in the meantime, during the three years, uh, many things will happen. So, yeah. Um, two types of uh, uh, transactions, exchange rate, uh, transact exchange transaction. One is spot trade. Spot trade is, as I said, uh, based on the spot exchange rate, right? Spot exchange rate is uh, the... Uh, so the spot, uh, spot trade is the transaction that is completed or settled within two business days. So, uh, if you uh, if you uh, traded uh, using the uh, uh, spot uh, exchange rate, then the settlement will take place uh, in two business days. Um, it, it is not like uh, uh, you go to bank and uh, change your currencies with other uh, currencies. That's that's that's. This is not kind of a, yeah, could, that could be a transaction, but um, uh, here the, the, the tra trade means that uh, the transactions between brokers and uh, the dealers, okay? A forward trade, you guys know the, what forward trade is? What, what is a forward uh, transaction is for the transaction? Um, Martin, do you know about the forward transaction? Martin, Jerome, no? Yeah, not really. Okay, so um, oil. Okay, let's talk about oil. Nowadays, the gas and diesel 
right? Gas and diesel. Gas price is about, I don't know, about 1,500. And diesel is around 1,800, right? So in the past, the price, the gap, uh, the, the price of uh, the gas was much higher than diesel, right? But now it, it reversed. Um, I think this is not very good way of this. Okay. Okay. Um, forward, forward can. Have you guys know forward, forward, forward transaction? Yeah, forward transaction. Forwards, yeah, forwards, futures, swaps, options, swaptions. Okay, so these are all about derivatives. These are all derivatives. Derivatives is the financial instrument, uh, financial instrument uh, based on the some underlying assets such as uh, stock, bonds or commodities okay all sorts of things all sorts of uh the real uh, so all sorts of uh, on the uh, um yeah the 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 valuable uh the valuable uh valuable assets okay um, and the currency, currency should be also, can be also underlying assets uh, for the, uh, of the derivatives. So for the futures, options, uh, swaps and swaptions. But uh, simply speaking, let's say you are, you are receiving some monies because uh, for example, you you guys working in, uh, working in Korea, but you guys do not make money, right? So you need money from your parents, right? But um, <clears throat> you need a lot of money. So just just for example, you needed some house to stay in. But um, thinking of the real estate market in Korea, you think of buying, <laughs> purchasing the house in Korea. So. <clears throat> Yeah, purchasing in Korea. So then it requires a lot of a huge amount of money, right? So then you need the money from your parents. So then your your parents is gonna send you money, uh, uh in your home uh, home country country, uh, home country currency. So then, uh, the exchange rate is let's say, at the time, um, uh, one one thousand Korean won. For let's say a uh, euro, right? So when you receive the uh, okay, you borrow the money from your parents. So uh, you you borrow your parents a huge amount of money at, at exchange rate one thousand uh, Korean won per year, you know, for one euro. Uh, but uh, you're thinking of selling the uh, the house in one year later, right? So we just at a, at a gain. But the, when you send back the money uh, to your parents, you may be concerned about the exchange rate, right? You may be concerned about uh, concern about the, the the devaluation of the Korean one against the euro, right? Let's say uh, the house, the price of house increased to ten uh, percent. Okay, so you made a good investment in Korea, purchasing a house. So the price of the house has increased by ten percent. Or twenty percent, whatever. But if the Korean one is is devaluated, uh, depreciated against the euro, then when you send the money uh, uh, back to your parents, 
after exchange, after the Korean won exchange the euro, there will be no more gain in your home country currency, right? So that is the risk of, uh, the, the, there is the currency risk. So if you are concerned about the depreciation of uh, a Korean won, then you may enter into forward contract where you lock in exchange rate at specific rate on um, on a specific date. So let's say in one year, in one year, your investment period is one year. So in one year, when you sell, when you when you sell Korean one to send money back to your parents, based on the forward contract in which the exchange rate in one year is uh, fixed at some specific rate, you are not, uh, you don't have to uh, concern about the uh, spot rate in one year. You just need, to, you just uh, uh, use the board rate. Board rate is the rate uh, agreed upon in the contract with the bank, right? So let's say your board rate is 1,000, no, uh, 999, right? So uh, then in one year, even if the spot rate in one year is lower than 1,990 Korean one for one euro, you don't have to worry about that because you have a forward rate. So you send the, your money, uh, the Korean one, you're going to exchange Korean one and uh, at this exchange rate, 1991 Korean one for your euro. So, so this is forward. So forward is the, um, is, it, it is a, a financial instrument to, uh, to hedge your risk uh, in, in, in case of a currency, currency risk uh, against the, uh, yeah. Uh, depreciation and uh, the, 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 the uh, devaluation of the uh, currency, the devaluation of the currency. Okay, so uh, all these uh, derivatives, for the futures, the swaps, options, or whatever, all the derivatives is, is the uh, was uh, created to uh, avoid risks. Okay, so then your question would be. Hey, what if the Korean won has appreciated in one year, right? Yeah, so you can make a bet, but then um, uh, you take a risk, right? So if you want to take a risk, then you don't have to hedge your current risk, right? But if you want to be just uh, uh, want to focus on what you what 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 you want to do and forget about the current risk, then you can enter this for the contract. So many businesses, many corporations, uh, um, I mean, if you go much deeper, then it, it, uh, there are many, many uh, other um, uh, situations, but simply speaking, forwards and futures and other derivatives are, create, uh, are the, uh, the financial instrument that minimize the uh, uh, the risks rather than um, rather than retain rather than um, rather than create uh, some uh, profit opportunity. Okay, that's the key. So forward trading is the agreement to exchange currency at some time in future at some at specific rate. The fixed rate. So in one year, you uh, agreed of, or agreed on with uh, uh, th uh, th this is the specific rate you agreed on with a bank to exchange your currencies with others. Okay. So for exchange rate given directly or for the points, yeah, you don't have to know uh, about this. Okay, so based on this understanding on forward trade, forward rate, <clears throat> um, covered interest rate parity. Covered interest rate parity is, okay, uncovered. 
Um, the cobalt interest rate parity is, before we talk about cobalt interest or uncobalt interest rate parity, interest rate parity is pretty similar to purchasing power parity, right? In the purchasing power parity, uh, the key factor is was inflation, right? But in an interest rate parity, the key factor is that um, exchange rate is adjusted for its interest rate, right? That's the only difference, right? Hmm. But um, when when you when you uh, when uh, when you have this term covered, it means that um, in the board market in the board. In the forward market, forward market is the market where uh, individuals and the corporations uh, uh, enters in the forward agreement with the banks, right? Um, so forward market is not former, not former, not former. Uh, over the counter market, over the counter market, over the counter market, over the counter market means that there is no, uh, this board contract is not uh, traded in the, you know, some specific market such as uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange, something like that, right? So this is just uh, based on the, uh, there's a broker such as banks. So banks uh, uh, broke. Uh, they 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 broke the uh, the uh, supply and demand on the um, uh, foreign currencies. Okay. Uh, the futures futures have some futures contract traded in the on some specific uh, market such as. Uh, Chicago, Chicago, uh, Chicago uh, Mercantile Exchange, Exchange Mark, Chicago Merchant Exchange, or New York Stock Exchange. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, cobalt interest rate parity is the uh, the forward rate in the forward market forward rate is going to be determined based on interest rate parity. That's corporate interest rate parity, okay? If uh, the uncorporate interest rate parity means that without using for the contract, simply future in exchange rate will be based on interest rate parity, okay? So the only difference between covered and uncovered is whether or, whether or not you use, uh, whether or not uh, for the contract is, uh, uh, for the contract is used in the, uh, yeah, for the contract is, for the contract is used in the determination of interest rate. Uh, sorry, in the determination of uh, uh, exchange exchange rate, okay. So corporate interest rate parity means that uh, because in the corporate interest rate parity in, in this theory, uh, forward contract is used. So forward contract in uh, the forward rate under the forward contract is going to be determined like this based on the interest uh, based on the interest rate. Right, the same as we do. If you see this formula, right, this looks pretty similar to the purchasing power parity. So, this is the forward contract. Uh, this is a forward rate on the forward contract, right? So, this forward rate will be decided based on this formula. So this is the so once uh, so as far as the forward contract forward rate is determined based on this uh, interest rate parent interest rate 
uh, based on the adjustment for interest rate difference, then we can say uh, this is a covered interest rate parity. Okay, but without using for the contract, if if you want to, if the um, let's say expect the rate, expect the rate, expect the spot rate in one year. If expected uh, exchange rate in one year, this one, right? Without using for the country, you just wait and see what the uh, expected rate, expected exchange rate in one year, right? So, if the exchange rate in one year is uh, determined uh, using the interest rate difference uh, like this, right? So then, oh, then covered uncovered uh, interest rate parity. So. If in one year exchange rate is the uh, determined based on this formula, then you can say ah uh, that is uncovered. The interest rate is uh, um, yeah, that is in uncovered interest rate parity. The, in, the exchange rate is um, is in, in exchange exchange rate impair uh, based on the uh, interest rate difference based on the interest rate, okay? So, purchase of power par uh, relative of purchase of power parity. Another theory is uh, interest rate parity, but in terms of interest rate parity, there is a two ways to, um, two ways to, uh, to um, show the interest rate parity, but one is covered interest rate parity, the other one is uncovered interest rate parity. But we usually use covered interest rate parity because uh, um, that is uh, more robust, right? Because uh, we actually uh, uh, use a forward rate, uh, we actually determine forward rate based on uh, this interest rate, uh, yeah, interest rate parity, okay? So you guys understand? Get it? Any question? No, okay. So, um, if we believe that forward rate is determined based on this interest rate, uh, covered interest rate parity, then there should be no arbitrage. Okay, arbitrage. There's, there should be no uh, profit opportunity without any risk. What I'm saying is that uh, okay. Um, under the discovered interest parity, the uh, forward rate should be determined uh, this way, right? But if a forward rate is uh, not, if a coupled interest rate does not work uh, like this, then there is um, opportunity for profit without any risk. We, we are gonna take on the question. We are gonna take on the example a, a bit later. But before that, I think you guys need to know, understand uh, what arbitrage actually means, okay? Uh, okay, arbitrage, arbitrage. Uh, arbitrage, uh, in this financial um, world, arbitrage means that uh, profit, 
opportunity without taking risk. So arbitrage transaction is the, uh, the transaction where you can uh, take a profit uh, without taking any risk. But you need to trans you need to make some uh, transactions on the same uh, on the same asset uh, several times. So uh, simply speaking, let's say uh, town A, town B, right? So in town A, uh, the one apple says uh, town B. One town A, one Apple says that ten uh, one dollar. Town B, uh, Apple says that zero point eight dollars. Right. So then, there's uh even though the Apple these two Apples, <laughs> these two Apples are actually exactly the same in terms of quality and the size, of whatever. Right. So then. But the, the price of the apple is different in, in two different markets, right? Two different towns. So, but the, but uh, let's say you have, let's say you can uh, work between uh, two uh, uh, towns without any trouble, right? So then you're gonna purchase uh, uh, the uh, apples in town B and you're gonna sell the same efforts in town A. So then you're gonna take $0.2 for each apple, right? Just assume that uh, there's no uh, um, cost uh, in moving uh, the apples from A B to A, right? So just assume that there's no other cost, uh, there, there's no other risk. If this is the case in terms of a price of apples selling in, in, uh, in town A, town B, then you have a, yeah, arbitrage opportunity. This is the uh, case of arbitrage, okay? So this kind of uh, um, opportunities could also take place in the financial market. If this theory, uh, uh, this formula does not work, Okay. Um, okay. Um, but if you in this case, if you keep buying apples in town B, then the price of apple in town B will getting higher, right? Because you buy more apples in town B. So the price of apple will increase, but in town A, the price of apple will go down. Why? Because there are more supplies of apples, right? So in the end, there will be no difference in the price of the apples between A and B, right? So that in that case, we can see we can say that all markets are very efficient. So before that, when uh, market is not efficient, then there's an arbitrary opportunity, then arbitrary transaction that's uh, made, right? You buy one apple and the sell in the other market. So simultaneous uh, purchase and sale of the same asset in different market in order to profit from tiny differences in as, as, as a listed price, right? That is the arbitrage transaction. So exploitation of a short-lived variations in the price of identical similar financial instrument in different market or different forms is the arbitrage transaction, okay? So lower prices are bid up, and why higher price asset are sold off, okay? That is arbitrary. For example, if you 
have uh, two uh two two boyfriends, right? <laughs> and then one boyfriend uh, and the other boyfriend uh, you, the, the, one of uh, both, but uh, these two guys don't doesn't know don't know each other, right? So then you can uh, sometimes arbit <laughs> arbitrage uh mental calculation. Not a not a proper uh example. Sorry. Um Okay. Yeah, in the foreign exchange market, the arbitrage transaction is the um in the covered interest rate on based on the covered interest parity. Um, using favorable interest rate differentials to the invest in higher yielding currency and hedging it exchange risk through for the currency uh, contract. Um, due to uh, arbitrary trade in trading, it is reasonable to assume that future spot will be equal to uh, current future rate. Um, just a minute. Um, no opportunity for arbitrage using for the contract. High interest rate over base currency for the discount, lower interest rate for the premium. Yeah, so given that you guys may understand what arbitrage is, then um, from this formula, from this formula, as you can see, if the uh, foreign currency interest rate, if a foreign currency interest rate is a uh, higher, right, then a base theoretical, okay, base currency. Let's say. From this formula, it's pretty simple. From this formula, let's say this is the this shows like this foreign currency uh, foreign currency is counter currency and the domestic currency is base currency. Okay. So if foreign currency's interest rate is a uh, higher, right, then the forward rate will increase, right? Forward rate will increase. If uh, an interest rate in foreign countries is uh, higher, right? Right? And if domestic uh, currency's interest rate is uh, higher, then foreign uh, forward rate will decrease, right? So, um, here, higher interest rate of base currency, higher interest rate, higher interest rate of base, base, uh, base currency, domestic currencies, uh, um, I mean, interest rate of, of domestic country, uh, is when inter interest rate of domestic country is uh, higher than the foreign countries, then the forward rate will decrease, right? Forward rate will decrease. So then we call it forward discount. Forward discount. Um, just a minute. Interest rate is uh, lower, a uh, higher. Yeah. The interest rate is higher than the domestic currency interest rate. Higher than, simply speaking, depreciation 
of domestic currency. And domestic currency interest rate lower than appreciation of domestic currency, right? So this is about board, board rate, okay? So let's say um, if, if, if the domestic, is, is the, uh, let's say Korea's, if, if Korea's interest rate is uh, higher, getting higher than, for example, Japan's, then Korean won will depreciate against the Japanese yen in terms when it comes to forward rate, right? We are talking about forward rate. But if domestic if Korean's exchange rate, interest rate is lower than uh, Japan's interest rate, then Korean won will appreciate against uh, Japanese yen in terms of uh, forward rate, right? But this is counterintuitive to this article, right? And uh, to this, to this, um, yeah, graph. Um, U.S. Central Bank increased uh, their base, uh, the federal rate, uh, the federal, uh, the, the the base rate increased in a short time frame, pretty significantly, right? So during this time, during 2002, 2022, uh, if you take a look at the exchange rate of U.S. dollar against euro, U.S. dollar is base uh, US here in this um, this minute. euro is counter right base US dollar is base oh no sorry base euro dollar counter, sorry. So if you look at this exchange rate, so this is the US dollar, right? For one euro. When the interest rate is getting higher in the US, US dollar is getting appreciated. But recently, it. Uh, uh, the exchange rate, the euro dollar has uh, uh, the revalued again, but during this time, interest rate in the US has increased a lot. And then uh, US dollar has appreciated, right? But the theory, in terms of uh, uh, covered in, uh, interest rate parity, when interest rate is uh, higher, the uh, the currency of the currency of the country with a high interest rate supposed to be depreciated, right? So the, the, the difference between uh, these two is that this is about spot rate. Professor? Yeah. I'm concerned like uh, is US dollar appreciated? maybe just euro depreciated and US dollar was the same, but uh, the resulting exchange rate was as on the graph. Could you say again? What do you, could you say again? Like uh, we see on the graph that uh, by the end of uh, 2022, we need less dollars to buy one euro, right? Yeah. And uh, you said that it is because US dollar appreciated, uh -huh. even though uh, they have higher interest rate. But uh, uh, can it be because euros depreciated? Yeah, I mean, so if, yeah, I, what I'm saying is that yeah, the, the US dollar is appreciated against your euro, right? What I'm saying is that uh, during this time, Europe's central bank didn't increase its, its interest rate 
as much as uh, the uh, U.S. Federal Bank, right? So uh, when U.S. Federal Bank increased interest interest rate, U European Central Bank didn't uh, move a lot. Okay. So what I'm saying is that so when there is interest rate, uh, dip, uh, when the interest rate parity means that when interest rate is uh, higher in your in in your home uh, domestic country, then the currency the value of the currency of your uh, home country is supposed to depreciate in uh, based on this covered interest parity, this theory. But in the spot rate, in terms of spot rate, the reverse reversal actually takes place. That's what I'm saying. So uh, the reason I'm trying to compare, uh, I'm trying to, uh, to uh, the, 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 the point of what I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to making out is that um, this theory, covered interest theory, uh, parity is only applies for the, uh, the, the, for the, the, for the uh, exchange, not spot rate, okay? That's what I'm saying. And if you uh, read the articles, or the, when you are read the articles, you may find that, oh, uh, interest rate has increased. So that, uh, the, for example, interest rate in, in, the, in, in Germany has, uh, has increased a lot. So uh, not, not only, not Germany, um, Japan. Japanese interest rate has increased a lot. So then Japanese yen would get uh, would be a little bit stronger than before in terms of spot rate, right? Okay, that's what I'm saying. So don't get confused uh, between the, the spot rate movement and uh, uh, this, uh, the covered interest rate parity, okay? Because covered interest rate parity only, uh, 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 only applies to the uh, for the rate, not spot rate. Okay, that's my point. Then you guys understand this formula, okay? Not much different from uh, the uh, purchase power parity. Okay, this is uh, at the estimation. This one is also can be used to, to estimate the forward rate uh, using the interest rate. Uh, but the second one is more convenient, okay? Um, yeah, if you have time, uh, read this article. Oh. Suppose the spot in three is spot in three months board rate of board yen are one zero eight point four six and the one zero seven point one three respectively. Okay, spot and the three months board rate. Is the yen expected to get stronger or weaker? Board spot rate is one zero eight four six becomes 107.13. So then yen is uh, stronger or weaker? Stronger? Yeah. Against the whatever currency, against the whatever currency, right? This currency, has depreciated, right? And the yen has appreciated. That's good. Good job. What would you estimate is the difference between the inflation rates of the United States and Japan? So here, base currency is uh, US dollar. So what would you estimate the difference between the inflation rates of the United States and Japan? So the difference is going to be one zero seven, right? Minus one zero eight or six one zero seven minus one, right? That is the uh, difference in inflation rate between the two countries, right? Roughly.
so foreign currency inflation and domestic currency inflation. So uh, domestic currency is here, US dollar, right? Foreign currency is Japanese yen. So probably uh, US uh, inflation rate is higher than uh, Japanese inflation rate. That's why uh, US dollar is depreciated and uh, Japan is yen appreciate. So this is about relative of uh, unfortunate power, power parity and uh, uh, not much about board rate, but anyway, uh, you can uh, read uh, what uh, the board rate actually means when it's higher than the spot rate in, yeah, in the future. Okay. <clears throat> Make arbitrary transactions. Ah, <sighs> Well, before we uh, take on this question, uh, please uh, let me uh, move on to, let me move on. Um, let me skip this question, it takes a lot of time. Uh, exchange rate risk, I'm gonna give you uh, separate uh, answers, okay, and this. Okay, I'm gonna give you answers to this question. Uh, ex exchange rate risk, in the short run, uh, the exchange rate uh, usually exposed more exposed to interest rate and the board rate uh, for the exchange uh, agreement. Okay, so this is supply and demand. Uh, the exchange market is, is much more complicated. It has a lot of things to talk about, but just to try to be simple. Uh, and in the long run, uh, the exchange rate is more uh, exposed to inflation rate, okay, or unanticipated changes in relative economic conditions, or political changes, and everything. Um, so just to need to know, interest rate is more short-term factors, and inflation is more long-term factors, okay, in terms of uh, effect on the exchange rate, okay. Uh, that's one. That's that's the key point. Um, as you see, right? Exchange interest rate has increased uh, in in it recent uh, during the years, and then exchange rate has responded to this increase in, in interest rate, right? So interest rate, uh, interest uh, exchange rate is more exposed to uh, interest rate in the short. Okay. Any questions uh, as for this uh, foreign currency? Uh, exchange rate risk. Actually, this is quite brief. Just, 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 <laughs> just to take one step into uh, yeah, international finance. Any question? Anything unclear? No. Okay. Then let's move on to review. Uh, capital budgeting. MPB, IRR, right? You you guys first need to know the difference between MPB, IRR, and, and what MPB is, what IRR is, right? It, don't try to uh, spend too much of the time uh, calculating um, the crunching the numbers, but uh, first of all, you should have a good understanding what MPB, IRR is, okay? I, I might take on this question uh, soon, and then, uh, first of all, IRR is uh, the discount rate that makes the net present value of investment is zero, right? So you guys know uh, what IRR actually functions uh, in this formula, right? Make zero. So based on the IRR rule, investment is acceptable as IRR exceeds the recovery return or hurdle rate. It should be rejected otherwise. So IRR is pretty... So. IR stand alone. Uh, IR does not cannot stand alone, right? You always have uh, cost of capital or required return, right? This is kind of a uh, benchmark, right? So you should compare 
is the IRR against the cost of capital, right? As far as IRR is uh, higher than cost of capital, then you're gonna go, you're gonna go for your project, right? Uh, conflict. So you guys need to know why there's a conflict between MPB and IRR, okay? The main, even if the uh, IRR is, uh, even if uh, one product, uh, in case of this project A, in terms of IR, uh, IRR is uh, higher than project B. But as I said before, uh, uh, as a standalone, IRR means nothing, right? So you may have, uh, you're supposed to, you must have a required return. So uh, required return, based on the required return, MPB must be also calculated, okay? So unlike uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, if the required return is some under, uh, Based on some specific credit return, MPB may have a high, uh, the MPB of the product will be the lower IRR, maybe higher, uh, higher than the product, uh, MPB of, of the product with the uh, uh, low, uh, uh, sorry, the, the product, uh, the MPB of the product with the lower IRR may have a higher MPB than the others, okay? So, uh, so this is conflict between IRR and MPB. Why? Because required return may um, we you also need to consider the required return and uh, need to co consider the MPB. And uh, uh, the other reason is the, the cash flow, the timing of cash flow. Because of the timing of cash flow. Uh, there, there may be, a, because time and cash flow, there's a difference. Right? Uh, there is a, it's a conflict between IR and NPB, okay? Um, th that's all I can say about this. And um, if the cash flows, uh, signs of the cash flow changes more than one time, like this, okay? Minus, minus, plus, minus, right? So then you can expect the uh, internal rate of return. You can you can expect more than one internal rate of return. Okay, so uh, in this case you should definitely uh, not like that. This is not cash flow. <laughs> this is cash flow minus plus minus. Okay, so like this uh, you have uh, the when you have more than one time changes in the signs of cash flows, then you expect more multiple IRRs, then uh, either one is not very terminable. But if you have a required return, right? The expected required return is between this, then that will be fine. But, um, what, what is recommendable is that you, you have to use uh, an MPB when you expect more than, uh, when you expect, when you have the cash flow. So when the cash flows changes in number, changes the signs more than one time, then uh, it'll be much more safer to use MPB rather than IRR, okay? Um, okay, then, I think uh, I want to take on this question. So some people believe firmly, even passionately, that ranking projects on IRR is okay if each project's cash flows can be reinvested on at project's IRR. They also say that MPB rule assume that cash flows are reinvested at the opportunity cost of capital. Think carefully about this statement. Are they true? Are they a uh, helper? Okay, first of all, uh, IRR. So ranking products IRR is okay if each product cash flow investment at the product's IRR. But basically, I think I explained before, in IRR, right? 
as an as an IR artist, let's say this initial investment and the year one, two, three, four, right? So then there is some specific cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, right? Uh, if you discount uh, this cash flow based uh, using this IRR, right? Then this present values zero if you add these two, right? Right? That's the IRR. Initial investment, cash flow one, cash flow two, cash flow three, cash flow four. Let's say this investment of poly period is four years, okay? Yeah, cash flow zero. So if you have an IRR, if you discount, cash flow one to year, year zero, right? Present value. If you add this all, zero, right? You get it? Likewise, if 100 dollars, the future variable over 100 minus one initial uh, investment and the future value cash uh, one and future value cash two, cash value two, future value cash three, right? So if this, uh, in the reversal of this uh, uh, valuation into future value, right, should be also zero. You know what I mean? Right? Discounting, if you're discounting cash, cash flow, future cash flows to the present, and and uh, and and then and the, if and then the initial and the you. Uh, and you, if you combine the, with the future values with the initial investment, you're supposed to have with zero MPB, right? So likewise, uh, just a reversal of the calculation, if you calculate the future value of this initial investment in four and the future value in cash flow in one to, uh, 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 yeah, future value in four of in cash flow one, uh, future value in four of cash flow two, right? So if you have all future values of this initial investment or cash flows, then in terms of cash flow, the future cash flow, future value of these cash flows should be also zero. Right? This means that our uh, entire rate of return will should be reinvested. Okay. But but so yeah, th this is true that the, 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 the each product cash flows can be reinvestment reinvested as a product IRR. That's true. But um, is it really realistic? I mean, it, this IRR, for example, this IRR can be uh, this cash flow can be reinvested at uh, uh, at uh, this cash flow in the future, do you, do you expect this cash flow to uh, produce the, uh, the same return over the years? I don't think Professor? so. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't understand what is like reinvesting at uh, a special return rate. Like what we mean when we say reinvesting. And in the second part, we also have like reinvested at the opportunity cost of capital. Like, I, I don't understand what's happening while we reinvest, what we reinvest. Re oh, sorry, reinvest. Okay. Oh, that's a good point, reinvest. 
sorry. <laughs> I know you guys know that uh, what reinvest means. <laughs> yeah. Reinvestment means that once you have a cash and then you uh, put the cash into uh, the same investment. So what I'm saying, so in, in year one, for example, you have a cash flow, some specific cash flow. Then you put the money into the same project. The reinvestment is you, once you have a cash, then you invest more, the, you don't use the cash for something else, but you use the cash into investment. So you don't consume the money. You don't, you use the cash into investment for the sake of a return. That's the reinvestment, okay? Okay. So uh, this cash flow is re, uh, so, uh, so, so here, if each product cash flows can be reinvested at product IRR, then ranking the product on IRR is okay? I don't know. Reinvestment uh, um, based on the, uh, the, the IRR, yeah, it is true that the, each cash flows will invest the at IRR. That's true, but um, I don't know whether in reality uh, whether the cash flows supposed to be um, so each cash flow supposed can be reinvest reinvested uh, re, uh, can be uh, can be reinvestment at the uh, at at the project's uh, internal rate return because. Uh, uh, future is not certain, okay? Okay, and uh, MPB, MPB, uh, simply speaking, MPB just, we do not uh, make uh, the assumption of uh, re, uh, assumes MPB cash flows are invested at the surface. No, MPB is uh, discounted at uh, uh, opportunity cost of capital, that's true, but, it does not assume that uh, cash flows should be reinvested at the cost of capital. No, that's not the case. So, okay. So this is a little bit, uh, a little, maybe a little bit difficult for you, but that's all I can say, okay. And um, yeah, let's take one discussion. Uh, a Koran company is considering a new three-year expansion project that requires an initial, initial fixed asset investment of 2.15 million. The fixed asset will be depreciated a straight line to zero over the over its three-year tax life, uh, after which time it will be worthless. Uh, the project is estimated to generate 2.32 million in annual sales with a cost of 1.25 million. The tax rate twenty three percent and uh, required return fourteen percent. So working capital is one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and the fixed uh, asset will be market value one hundred eighty five thousand dollars at the end of the project. So, what is the project year zero that cash flow? Okay, so year zero we only have investment. What investment do we have? First of all, uh, fixed asset investment, right? Two point zero two point one five million. 2.15 million minus cash outflow, right? And then what another investment is initial investment in the token capital, $150,000. So $150,000 cash outflow. And within the, with the initial inventory, uh, that, that's not year zero. So year zero is $115,000. So year zero, Oh, sorry, not, not this one. <laughs> so year zero, uh, year zero, 150, yeah, that's, that's all. So year zero, this is net cash flow, right? And uh, year one, year two, year three, year one, 
what is the sale? The sale is uh, 2.32 uh, 2 2 million, right? 2.23 million. So 2.32 million, 2.3, right? And what is the depreciation expenses? Depreciation expenses is uh, based on the straight line method. So uh, this fixed asset will be worthless uh, after three years, right? So it should be depreciated by three, right? This is uh, three. Two point two one five million, right? And what's the cost? Cost is one point two two five, one point two five, one point two five. And uh, tax rate is twenty three percent. It requires return to fourteen percent. So we deduct to. Uh, depreciation expenses a cost and then we calculate the tax multiply with with multiplying with uh, 23% okay this is tax so then uh year 1 year 2 year 3 the cash flow plus you add back depreciation right and minus and minus so you have uh, this cash flow Year three, year three, uh, this working capital invested in year zero as the product is going to end, this working capital will be cashed in. Why? You know, working capital are usually inventory or work account receivables, right? So this uh, uh, inventory account receivable as the project ended uh, will be collected or sold. So that's why working capital, uh, excess working capital in zero, year zero will be cast in year three when the uh, product is ended. So. $150,000 will be additional cash in year three. And fixed asset. Fixed asset, um, fixed that will have a market value of $185,000. So after long years, after three years of usage of the fixed asset, the value of market value of of the fixed asset, one hundred eighty-five thousand uh, dollars. One hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. And what is the what is going to be book value? This is fair market value, right? And what is the book value? Book value is going to be zero because uh, because straight uh, depreciated to uh, uh, will be depreciated uh, to zero, right? So book value is zero. So capital gain is $185,000. You wanna sell this fixed asset in year three because the project is ended. So you don't have to keep the, uh, keep, keep the, the fixed asset, right? No more use. So if you sell the fixed asset at this fair market value, then you wanna have a capital gain $185,000. Then, this capital gain should be also subject to cap, uh, tax, right? So this 140,000, 2,450 is calculated uh, $150,000 multiplied by one minus one plus uh, 23, tax rate 23, right? 0 0.23. Then you have this one hundred forty-two thousand four hundred fifty. This is original cash flow, cash inflow in year three. So in year, year three, you have a cash flow one point nine, around one point nine million. Then you discount these cash flows back to present using this recovery recovery return fourteen percent. Then you have this. Uh, and then, and then, and you deduct this initial cash flow 
uh, yeah, from this total uh, value of the present total present value of these cash flows. So then you have net present value. Um, in the final, I'm not gonna give you uh, this kind of uh, uh, full calculate uh, this kind of question that requires you to uh, make a full calculations. But I just uh, um, make some questions that may require you, that may um, expect you to have a good understanding on how to cal how to um, uh, calculate uh, uh, net present value like this. So. I'm not actually asking you to do this, uh, to do calculation like this, but uh, you may expect some questions, uh, questions that uh, that that uh, need uh, some some questions that you may solve only when you know uh, this process. Okay. Mm. Um, this one. Actually, I tried to give you uh, additional information uh, about, but uh, I don't have time. So I'm not giving you uh, uh, this kind of questions, uh, uh, related questions to this one, uh, but uh, yeah. I'm gonna give you answers to this one in a separate email. Okay, any questions? Any questions about the final and about the uh, professor? Yeah, our exam is on Thursday next week or Tuesday. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, Thursday. Oh, okay. Thank you. Not Tuesday. December eight. December eight, two thirty-four. Or on screen calculator PPT. If you convert into PDF, that's better. Any questions? Okay. So then see you next Tuesday and have a great weekend and keep warm. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Professor. Thank you.